Hi, I'm Philip Koval and I will share some experiments about a digital twin today. So who am I? I'm a software engineer from Brantany in France and uh, I'm currently working as an open source contributor as a Mozilla rep on IoT projects. So I've been involved in the past in uh, open source software for the industry and mostly on embedded development like Tizen operating system, Yocto for automotive and uh, IoT TOCF when I was at Samsung. So you can contact me at this address pearl.org slash rzr and I'm available for any cooperation or opportunities. So uh, you can also check some previous presentation on a related subject and video and social media and so on. So what are digital twin? Uh, this can be defined by this very short uh, definition. It's a digital replica of a physical entity with a connectivity between the pair. So once one is changing, the other is updated. And at the same time, once the other one has been changing, it can re should reflect to reality. So we have a kind of seamless interaction between the device or its model. And we can use uh, like a shadow object if the objects are disconnected. And we can also use this shadow object as a proxy to the actual thing to update uh, some properties. And of course, we can uh, view this 3D object in a simulation, and you can realize this in a uh, VR environment or augmented reality. So it's that's not something new because it was introduced in the year 2002. And uh, actually, a couple of years earlier, I act uh, some kind of uh, puppet show on the internet using sensor and VRML uh, plugins. But today is now it's more um, easier than it used to be in the past. So I will introduce you uh, with uh, this uh, concept. So I have this uh, robot and I can control each motor of it and it will update uh, the robot here. So this is a clue I'm changing the, mot the angle of the motor for the hand and it will open. And uh, at the same time the 3D model is updated at the same time. So you can create some kind of smart behavior between the device like uh, this using WebSync uh, Roller Engine, I can uh, update uh, some uh, properties of the robot. So when I'm pressing this approaching button, I can move the shoulder to 45 degrees and the arm to minus uh, 45 and turn the light on. And at the same time, I create uh, another rule which is doing exactly the same thing, but in the opposite direction. And uh, when I press on my WebSync uh, dashboard button, like this robot approaching button, it turns on the light as we saw when the robot is moving uh, in reality and in the simulation. And I have this extra sensor at, on the claw on my uh, robot and if I'm changing the color of my light from red to green and look back to the sensor, it's updated as greenish. So we have um, these uh, behaviors. Uh, so I can also control from a VR environment, uh, all the dashboard using 3D element like this switch and I can toggle it on and off just like I did before. It will update uh, the actual robot and the 3D model, which is a simplified version. So how can Digital Twin can be used? So it's very wide because we have some kind of device as a service concept. So even if the device itself is not yet created, you can design it and simulate it before you have it created. And then you can deploy to uh, an actual place. And if there is some issue, you can record and play back the, what has been done. So that's one use case. And the other is remote controlling. That's uh, what I've been doing just before. So this can be really helpful in a lockdown situation when you can get access to your machine. And uh, this is useful for uh, impact analysis and improved decision making. And it's part of the product light management. And so this can be used in many different domains from the industry. So we can imagine a supply ch a super production chain when you have different uh, robots working together. And if you want to see if they are getting alone and they are not conflicting themselves, you can do a simulation first and try to um, see if there, something can be optimized without stopping the production. It can be also been used in city when you want to have real time uh, um, visualization about the traffic in the city or the buildings. 
and you can use also robotics as I've shown in the interaction with humans like robotics and it can be used in different area I know there is some 5G experiment uh, using uh, digital twins so there is many use cases, and uh, you can check what the W3C is trying to uh, describing at this moment while we're here I want to speak about some ethical consideration and I want to remind that uh, in Europe the GDPR regulation is trying to promote system to be ending privacy by design and by default so that's an opportunity for open source software because privacy is part of our community DNA so the challenge we have today is can we create some digital twins with privacy in mind and to have something which is a user data centering and this tries to be more resilient so here I'm going to introduce the web because I believe it's a platform for creating this kind of uh, scenario so the web has been created for interoperability in mind it was uh, built on open standard and free software also and it's decentralized just like it was the internet at the beginning and uh, the browser itself is providing a, a trusted environment for isolating application of course uh, the web is programmable you can use a REST API for interacting with web services and if you need some real time you can use a WebSocket technology also and for UI and UX we have a lot in, 3, in 2D world using HTML but also now we are targeting the 3D world using uh, different uh, API like WebGL to access GPU for virtual reality and augmented reality is part of this extended reality so I will show a couple of framework I've been using and uh, also let's mention about IoT because uh, uh, there is a working group at W3C which is trying to uh, propose some uh, standard for dealing with uh, actual things on uh, using the web uh, platform and uh, one open source implementation is Mozilla Web Things so it's a smart one platform where user can control all the device in his home and uh, you uh, can con control them from the web using a URI dashboard and create some kind of automation uh, using rules that's what I've been shown just before and the platform itself is extensible with add-ons so you can support uh, new protocols or new services or new, some kind of new device or radio protocol whatever you need there is no limit to this and uh, for the record it has been uh, inspired by the web of things uh, work and uh, simplified uh, things description using uh, JSON schemas so privacy is one of the key very feature of this web thing uh, platform because all the devices are connected together inside the user lounge so each of them is a server connected to the gateway which is giving access to the user and the data stay at the edge so there is no cloud involved because the uh, dashboard is running on the gateway itself and uh, all device uh, resource can be also shared to other application in a safely way using a JSON web token and a REST API or WebSocket and uh, if you need to get access from the internet it's also possible using a tunnel provided by PackageKite so for the UI we saw the 2D dashboard which is actually SVG and um, for creating 3D application it's also possible in a virtual reality or augmented reality and now we are talking about extended reality so that's another word for 3D rendering in a browser using different framework and handling some device sensor so on a headset for instance you have some orientation sensor we can, where you can update uh, the view so everything is handled by uh, the so A-Frame framework I've been using which is based on the 3GS and which is based on the WebGL API and in the end it is running on the GPU so you have a decent performance and the scene graph uh, is made of different models that can be uh, parameterized and uh, for, from the document object model you can access each element in this scene and uh, you can for instance uh, target one uh, object and change the rotation using uh, the 3GS uh, object API and you can also describe uh, your, uh, your device uh, using a higher level API using uh, JSON schema so for instance we are not talking about a rotation but let's say we are modeling like a, a compass which is just an angle which is uh, indi indicating the direction of the north 
So the next step now is to bind the what can be uh, measured in the real world from IoT. So we have let's say a compass sensor and we can bind this to an uh, XR environment. So I've been doing this with using a, a web component and uh, while I'm here I can show you uh, another demonstration using uh, Mozilla Hub. So Hub is a Hub is a social platform where you can uh, connect together and make some chat room in a 3D environment. So it's running on a browser or, or mobile and you can uh, uh, um, move in this environment just like if you were in a computer game and uh, all device, uh, all clients are sharing the same environment and they are updated at the same time. So I'm updating here my f position on the phone and it's updated in a 3D world at the same time. But it go beyond that. This so I created uh, this uh, 3D model in a, which is a replica of my uh, this small uh, house uh, prototype. And uh, when I'm moving it in uh, the real world, it will be updated uh, also in the 3D environment. So how does this work? Uh, so we I have here a Raspberry Pi with a couple of sensors. So we have the control at the on this corner of the screen when I have different sensors like an accelerometer, a gyroscope and a magnetic sensor. So I'm measuring here the value as the angle to the north and if I'm moving my box uh, it will slowly converge to the north direction. So this is a WebSync dashboard and uh, I have different elements I can control from it. Like uh, I have also other sensors on this board, like uh, humidity, pressure, temperature, and also a joystick where you can uh, move in different direction. It will trigger events uh, and update uh, this uh, add sensor. And uh, as you can see, there is a matrix LED where I'm indicating the north direction, but I can also uh, control all the LED, change the colors of them. Let's move to. And also I can use uh, this uh, uh, message uh, property and if I'm changing it, it will display hello from IW2. So I made the sensor uh, add-on uh, for this uh, WebSync uh, sensor hat for Raspberry Pi. So if you want to get started, there is a simple example, which is a simulation, but it's also working on the actual device. So I'm trying to indicate uh, the value of a sensor uh, of a solar panel and uh, I'm changing the color of the solar panel on the roof of my model and it's uh, matching the, the, electric, the voltage level. So that's something can, you can use as a simulator also. I have it running on a microcontroller on a STM32 board using IoTGS, but you can use this on a Node.js. It's quite uh, easy to get started. So what you need to understand, so once you you are including the WebSync bindings to a frame uh, library, then you can uh, insert uh, into your document uh, a GLTF 3D model, and then you can find uh, one property of uh, so here this is a solar parts which is part of the house model and it's connected to the web thing uh, uh, which is uh, at a given uh, address so here it's a local address but you can use a, a device address or the gateway address so this need to be updated so here I'm sharing also some additional resources uh, you can uh, get access to the source code and if uh, you can give me uh, some feedback about uh, how can I um, move this uh, project forward or try to make it bigger for any different use case and um, so sponsorship is welcome. Feel free to reach me uh, on these addresses and uh, if there is an issue I really appreciate if you can uh, report them. So thank you for everything and um, now I'm open to any question. If there is uh, any, you can also reach me online.